Good morning, friends. Greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. And we welcome your calls, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and order products right off the website or call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also ask them about joining the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, get your products at the wholesale price, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. If you're the kind of person that likes the idea of helping others at the level of their health, if you I know there's a lot of folks who just like dealing with health issues and the whole concept of health is sort of a turn on. If you're one of those folks, this is a perfect, perfect business opportunity for you. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a perfect business opportunity for you. You don't even need to know a lot about health. Longevity's got a lot of other products, but if you're interested in health, it's, there's no better business to be in. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about, uh, well, we were talking about fats, actually, and, and the digestive system, but really, it wasn't, it's not really about fats that we're talking about. What we're really talking about here is energy. That's really the bottom line to this whole discussion about the digestive system and the whole, uh, this whole, all the talk, all the time we spend talking about on digestive illness, digestive disease, and then also fats we've been talking about. All of this, all of this is really about energy. This is a program, the bright side, we like to cut to the chase. Don't be, we want to simplify things. Medicine has been, and health has been so obfuscated and, and, and conf, made into this confusing mass of information, morass of information. Just a, it's a mess, really. There's so much wrong information, bad information, conflicting information, disinformation designed to confuse us, to take our power away from us, to take power away from the individual and give it to authorities. That's really what this, that's really what's going on here with health. With healthcare, have you noticed how it's become more and more centralized? There's like five or six or ten corporations that own all of healthcare, and that's that's I'm talking about the hospitals, basically, and the healthcare facilities, and the HMO, and the insurance companies. And I'm not even talking about the drug companies. All of this has been called, by the way, the, the medical mafia. There's a really cool book called The Medical Mafia by a lady whose name I cannot pronounce. Um, she's, she was an MD. She lost her license. She was a Canadian MD and she lost her license because she had the nerve to call, call out the medical model as the medical mafia. And this is a book, uh, it's really very interesting, very easy to read. Um, and if you're interested in this topic, uh, Ghislaine Lancot, I think she says it, it's French. She's French Canadian. Last name L-A-N-C-T-O-T, Lancot, Lancot, 
some, some, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it's a really interesting book, easy to read. Uh, she knows of what she speaks. Uh, and now she's just a plain old essayist. She lost her MD. She lost her license to practice medicine for speaking out. In any case, this whole medical mafia is, is built, is structured to take power away from the individual, put it into the institution's so-called authorities. Information is power. But bad information, wrong information, is it's not only disempowering, it's also manipulative. If you are on a beta blocker drug, for example, or a calcium channel blocker drug, or a blood thinning drug, or a thyroid drug, and you're told by your medical authority, air quotes, that you're going to be on that drug for the rest of your life, it's very likely that you are being conned. And, I, and it may not be, you know, it's not the individual doctors that are doing it. The individual doctors, they're good people for the most part. You know, there's probably bad ones there too, like with any profession. But for the most part, they go into into medicine because they think they're doing well. The problem is, is they're not thinking. They're not. They're not being critical thinkers. If you're if you're a medical professional, a healthcare professional, and you're giving somebody a diabetes drug for what is an eating disease, you're not a critical thinker. You're not sitting there thinking. So it's one thing for an end user, perhaps a, a somebody who's a patient, if you will. By the way. The word patient means one who suffers, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, if you're a patient and you're on a diabetes drug, okay, that's not great. And you probably should be taking a little bit more responsibility for your life. But if you're a doctor and you're dispensing a diabetes drug, which cannot help but poison the body, that's what drugs do for what is an eating disease. And you're not examining the cause of the problem, then you may be a nice person, but you're not doing good in the world. Likewise, if you're giving somebody a thyroid drug. Or a statin drug. If you're giving somebody a statin drug for what, again, is really not a disease, but a symptom of a disease, or a symptom of not even a disease, really, a symptom that the body's metabolism is messed up a little bit. That's what too much cholesterol is, and cholesterol sticking in the blood vessels is a metabolic issue. It's an issue of chemistry. And you're, not, and you're not savvy enough or intelligent enough or biochemically sophisticated enough to really see what's going on. You shouldn't be in the business. And I, you may be a nice person, but it's just not right. And this is true about pretty much all drugs that are, that are used to treat chronic degenerative disease. This is the number one health challenge in this country and around the world. It's called chronic degenerative disease. That is diseases that we do not recover from. Diseases that we do not recover from are not the norm, even though we consider them to be the norm. Because so many people have them. And so many people have two or three or more. It's a huge segment of the population that has over two chronic degenerative diseases. And it's an even bigger segment of the population that has at least one chronic degenerative disease. And many people have four or five chronic degenerative diseases. This is not normal, but we consider it to be normal. And this is all occurring under the watch of the pharmacomedical model slash mafia, if you believe Dr. former Dr. Langto. Chronic degenerative diseases, diseases that we do not recover from, are not the norm. They're not supposed to be like, we're not supposed to have these things. And so what is a chronic degenerative disease? A chronic degenerative disease is basically a part of the body not doing its work. And when I say a part of the body not doing its work, I'm not talking about the heart or the spleen or the lungs or the ner nervous system or the liver, I'm not talking about, when I say a part of the body is not doing its work, I'm talking about the cells, not the organs, not the tissues, but the cells. We focus on the liver, we focus on the heart, we focus on the circulatory system because that's what we see and that's really all we can do anything about from a medical perspective. But at the cell perspective, all chronic degenerative diseases are about cells not doing their work, cells not doing their business. And what is it that's causing a cell not to do its business? What is it that's causing a cell not to do its work? It's not complicated. It's extremely simple. It's not medical. It's not pharmacological. In fact, the medical pharmacological model can only do only muck things up worse. They cannot do anything at the level of the cell. They can only muck up the body. And that's what they do every day, millions of times a day. 
So what is it that's, what's the problem here? What, what is it that's causing the cells not to do their work? We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844 236 6010 is our number. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, ingredients, formulations, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, if you have a point of view, a perspective on anything we're talking about here today, we'd love to hear from you. 844 236 6010. I love talking to my smart listeners. If you're listening to this program, you are by definition a smart person because we do not dumb things down on this program. I give you the straight scoop, talk about all kinds of chemistry and biology and psychology. This is a show for smart people. And if you're listening to this program, by definition, you are a smart person and we'd love to hear from you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. I want to uh, give a shout out to my buddy, Robert whose mom just had a stroke. He's uh, on his way to go visit her. He wants some ideas about what to do. It's stroke is just an absolutely miserable, miserable, miserable experience that awaits us all uh, awaits many of us. I should say, if we don't take care of ourselves now, but if we don't take care of ourselves pre stroke, not that I'm blaming the victim anywhere here, but this is another reason why you want to make absolutely positively sure if you're healthy, you stay that way. And if you're sick, you, get the ball rolling and start to do something to turn the thing around. The body wants to be healthy. The body wants to be healthy. The body wants to regenerate. The body is a regenerating system. If it's not regenerating, there's something up. Now we tend to focus on the tissues, but it all begins at the level of the cell. That's why we've been talking about the digestive system. And I have not forgotten that we were talking about fats in the digestive system because it's all really about giving the cells what they need to do their business. When cells are sick, when we're sick, it's because our cells are sick. And when our cells are sick, it's because they don't have the wherewithal, the resources to do their business. They're broke, just like people. Cells cells go broke, or at least they have an energy deficit. When I talk about broke, I'm talking about energy. Money is energy. Money is a form of energy. Cells don't have exactly money, but they actually use something called, a. in biologists call it, Energy currency. You may have heard the term ATP. ATP is cell money. And when we talk about energy in a cell, we're talking about this stuff called ATP. I'm not even going to begin to go into the chemistry of it, but it is ridiculously amazing. In any case, you probably heard the term, or you may, at least you heard it now, it's called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this ATP stuff is cell money. When a cell is sick, all diseases, cell disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disease, it's all because cells are sick. They're really broke. They don't have the ATP. They can't generate energy. They can't do work. They cannot generate energy, so they degenerate. Chronic degenerative disease is cells that cannot generate energy. A cell is supposed to generate energy so that it can regenerate. When a cell does not have energy, it degenerates. Chronic degenerative disease is the, is the negative side of, re, of chronic regenerative health. There's chronic regenerative health and chronic degenerative disease. We want to be chronic regenerative health, healthy, chronically regeneratively healthy, I think you'd say. And it all has to do with generating energy, making energy. When we're sick, we're not making energy. All disease is cell disease. All cell disease is cell degenerative disease. It's a cell phenomenon. It's not about the, it's not about the tissue. It's not about the organ at the tissue and the organ. There's no control. Once it's at the tissue level, there's no control. The skin is the classic example of this. I, I'm no fan of the medical model, as you obviously know, but the dumbest of all the medical specialties is dermatology. It's the classic example of working where you have no control. It's true about all medicine, but the iconic example of working where you have zero control is dermatology. And that's why if you go to the dermatologist today, you will get exactly the same medicine that you would have gotten in 1960, 60 years ago, or almost 60 years ago. 
you would have got, you'll get a steroid cream, which is an anti-inflammatory immune substance. Now they have high-tech anti-inflammatory and immune substances, so high-tech steroids and an antibiotic. And that's pretty much it. And if you went for a, a rash in 1960, you get the same thing. And it's not just dermatology. That's just the classic example of how we work where there's no control. This is why doctors can only drug, that is poison, or remove, that is extract surgically, or radiate, or electrocute. That's all they have at their disposal. That's what the, the tools of the medical model. Now, do you need surgery sometimes? Yes, absolutely you need surgery sometimes. Do you need drugs sometimes? Yes, absolutely you need drugs sometimes. I'm not sure if you ever need to be electrocuted. And uh, you, I suppose you could say radiation has its... There's times when you might need to get something radiated. But for the most part, you're not going to be... And not for the most part, for all part, you're not going to be affecting change at the fundamental level at the level of health with any of these strategies. But at the cell level, we have tremendous control. And I say we have tremendous control, not they. Through our lifestyle choices, we can address the original breakdown at the cell level in a way the doctor can't, the way the medical model cannot. Do you need some of these strategies sometimes? Yes. Let's be very clear about it and praise God for surgery. Surgeons. I should say, and surgery. If you break your leg, you want it repaired. And there are times that's very, it's amazing, really. It's, it's miraculous. On the other hand, if you're dealing with diabetes or Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or autoimmune disease, it's not a doctor issue. There's nothing they can do. Yet I would venture to say 99% of people, if they had any of these things go wrong, the first thing they're going to do is go to a doctor, present company excluded. The first thing they're going to do is go to a doctor if you have an eczema rash. The first thing you're going to do if you have a, uh, a, a fibrillation in your heart, you're going to go to a doctor. Whatever. The first thing you're going to do if you have some kind of chronic constipation or diarrhea is go to a doctor. But what I'm saying here is that these are all lifestyle issues because at the end of the day, they're all about the level of the cell. And through food and uh, food with supplements, food slash supp supplements, exercise, rest, Avoiding molecules that the body has to eliminate, that is eliminating toxicity, that's basically it. That is it. I'm talking heart disease. I'm talking cancer. I talked to a, a gal yesterday, uh, stage two lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, and she's understandably freaked. You know, and I get this, these calls a lot. So what do you do for cancer? The same thing you do for everybody. You use food and supplements strategically. You don't eat as much food, and you're very selective about what you do eat, and you make sure you're supplementing. You have to exercise. you got to move the body around. If you have cancer, you you got to get that lymph going, but everybody has to move the blood. you got to get lots of rest because that's where you make growth hormone. That's where you make repair molecules, and avoid stuff that the body doesn't like. Sugar, for one. Drugs, for two. And make sure you're breathing correctly. And that's pretty much it. Food supplements, exercise, rest, detoxification or not toxifying, and making sure you're breathing correctly. And the reason these steps are so effective is because all of these facilitate the generation of energy at the cell level. Food is raw material for energy. Supplements are molecules that help the body utilize energy. Exercise stimulates energy. Rest stores energy. Avoiding the mole uh, molecules that the body has to detoxify protects the energy. And breathing sparks the whole thing. All right, 844 is our number on Pharmacist Ben. We'll return right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're on prescription drugs and you want to wean yourself off of your meds, if you are on a, a long-term drug, a drug that you're going to be on for the rest of your life, like an antihypertensive drug, for example, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, or blood thinner drug, perhaps, thyroid medication, your number one health goal, your number one health challenge should be to figure out how to wean yourself off that med. And you don't want to just stop taking your meds, by the way. If you have, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Some, some drugs, it doesn't matter if you just stop taking them. Statin drugs, for example. But if, you just, if you're on a high blood pressure drug, you don't want to just stop taking that. 
or Prozac or a, 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 a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, you definitely don't want to stop taking that or a cardiovascular type of drug, your blood thinner drug. You definitely don't want to just stop taking it. But your number one health challenge should be to figure out how to gradually wean yourself off that drug and make sure you tell your doctor, but you don't have to listen to your doctor. Make sure you work with your doctor, but that doesn't mean you have to accept his orders. You want to be a critical thinker with everything your doctor tells you. You want to be a critical thinker all the time, but especially with things like medication. Just because a doctor says you need the medication doesn't mean you do. But if you, if you are working with a doctor, you owe it to him because he's trying to do a, a job, trying to help you for the most part. They're trying to help you. You owe it to him. You owe it to your doctor to work with him to at least tell him what you're doing. You don't have to take his orders. You don't have to follow his orders, but you got to work with him if he's working with you. It's not fair to just go to a doctor and then stop taking the drugs and expect that doctor to be able to take care of you. Find another doctor if he doesn't want to take you off your medication. So anyway, if, you got, if you're on a prescription drug and you want to wean yourself off of it, I can help you do that. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. Get to a couple stories. And then we'll get your phone calls. We've been talking about cannabinoids. Uh, well, I've been, I should say we talked about cannabinoids at the, uh, at the uh, Longevity Convention, and I've been talking about cannabinoids now for a, a while. We're going to have a uh, couple of people on. We had somebody on last week, my friend Rick, talk about CBD cannabinoids. We're going to have some Longevity folks talking about cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are the active uh, or a family of compounds that provide activity to the marijuana plant and to the hemp plant. But the one cannabinoid that, uh, that has been so popular for decades to get people high is just one type of cannabinoid. It's called THC. You probably heard that. THC is one of the cannabinoids. There's zillions of them. And they keep finding more of these cannabinoids. And they're not just found in marijuana, by the way. They're not just found in um, the hemp plant. Cannabinoids are found in clove, and they're found in cinnamon, and they're found in paprika, paprika, and they're found in oregano, uh, and they're found throughout nature. Hops is one of nature's best sources of non-marijuana cannabinoids, and that includes the THC. Well, I shouldn't say that. It doesn't, there's not a lot of THC in any of these, but there's other cannabinoids, like something called CBD. And guess what? Now it turns out that these uh, cannabinoids, particularly T uh, THC, but also CBD can promote the removal of fibrosis of fibers that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is marked by the formation of what they call amyloid plaques, which are fibers that cause the nerves in the brain to get all jumbled up and tangled. Now, nobody's saying that that's the cause of the Alzheimer's disease. That's just saying it's associated with the Alzheimer's disease. There's probably a reason why the brain is forming these amyloid plaques. Let me, let me rephrase that. Obviously, the amyloid plaques are going to disrupt electroconductivity in the brain, but the problem is underneath the amyloid plaques. The amyloid plaques, like all fibrosis, fibrosis is a common factor in all diseases, is deterioration or breakdown of tissue, which is caused by deterioration or breakdown of cells, as we were talking about. So yes, the cannabinoids can be neuroprotective, absolutely, and that's what they found in this study. This is from... Uh, the Salk Institute, Professor David Schubert is quoted as saying, although other studies have offered evidence that cannabinoids may be neuroprotective against the symptoms in Alzheimer's, we believe our study is the first to demonstrate that cannabinoids, affects, uh, cannabinoids affect both inflammation and amyloid beta accumulation, that's fibers, in the nerve cells. Basically, the cannabinoids have a protective effect on the cells. They calm things down. How does that work with energy? They allow the nerve cells to do their business without expending as much energy. They help the nerve cells conserve energy. Remember, everything's about energy, and anytime you have some kind of benefit somewhere, it's going to be a, an energy benefit. In the case of the cannabinoids, this calming effect, the cannabinoids have a calming effect on cells. And this calming effect allows cells to spare their energy. Especially in the brain, this, this can be very important for the brain because the brain, is used, brain cells are using more energy than any other cells in the body, with the exception maybe the heart. So it turns out that far from being bad for your brain, cannabinoids actually have some benefits for nerve cells. And also, by the way, that has to do with, they also improve uh, seizure disorders, the cannabinoids. And that's one of the most important benefits of CBD, cannabinoids, which Longevity now has uh, three CBD products. We'll be talking about that next week. 
uh, is for seizure disorders, especially for children, because they're so non-toxic. The seizure drugs they give you, Tegretol, Dilantin, oh my God, those are awful drugs. Awful, awful, hideous drugs. Among the most hideous drugs in the entire pharmacopoeia, and that's saying something, and it turns out that CBD has anti-seizure benefits that are along the same lines with no toxicity. And THC, by the way, for that matter, too. The ketogenic diet is also an amazingly important strategy for, for brain health, for seizure disorders. And, oh, by the way, there's a relationship between CBD, the cannabinoids, and the ketogenic diet. Yes, the cannabinoids are derived from essential fatty acids. And essential fatty acids are important for folks who are going ketogenic. So if you're going to do the CBD, make sure you do some EFAs too. Make sure you do your ultimate EFAs, which get turned into natural cannabinoids, natural CBD by your body. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I got one more I want to read here. This is another Alzheimer's. Uh, you know, we'll read this tomorrow, I think. This is on, uh, on the famous amyloid plaques. You know, there's a disease called amyloidosis. It's actually generic amyloid formation that occurs in the lungs and various other parts of the body, the liver. It's exactly the same as Alzheimer's. It's Alzheimer's disease. You can have Alzheimer's disease of the lungs and Alzheimer's disease of the liver. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to Florida and say good morning to Richard. What's going on, Richard? How you doing? Okay, pharmacist Ben, good morning. Um, good morning. I've uh, been following you and been learning about the ketogenic diet, and it seems like that's the approach I would want to continue on. Okay. Recently, I uh, looked up a doctor on the Internet who is uh, an MD who promotes totally, uh, I guess it's a vegan diet, total plant-only diet, and no dairy. And What's I'm his name? In, you know, he's showing all the promotions and all the benefits of it. What's so his name? I started to confuse me. It's like, what's going to work best for me? I'm a, okay. I'm a high that's good. Those are, that's a legitimate question. Disease. That's a legitimate question. What's, a, what's this guy's name? Dr. Clapper. From, okay. I think he's from okay. California. Okay, so he's promoting a vegan diet, and you want to go ketogenic, yeah. and you have a kidney issue? Kidney issue, which I know you got to really be low on protein, I presume, and... Uh, and high blood pressure and all, but I hear a little... Okay, no. Well, let, let's talk about that because you're asking two very important questions. Number one, this whole idea of veganism, and number two, well, we want to talk about the mythology around the kidneys and kidney disease. Okay. So those are two very important subjects. we got to take a commercial break, so don't go away. We'll definitely address those when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we will be back right after this. back on the bright side and we do have lines open 844-236-6010 is our number we're talking to richard in florida about kidney disease and also the vegan diet are you there richard still here okay so let's take let's start off with the kidney thing first of all uh if you have a kidney problem the first thing you want to focus on is your sugar your blood sugar the problem with the vegan diet is it's very high. It, it has a tendency to raise blood sugar because it's high in things like grains and beans and potatoes because you got to get uh, you got to get filled up somehow. And most people can't get filled up on just celery, so they end up eating a lot of bread and they eat a lot of processed grains and such, and beans especially legumes. All of those can wreak havoc on your blood sugar, which will definitely mess up your kidneys. So you can go all, you know, you can use this guy's strategy and say, well, I'm going to go low protein and vegan diet. It's easier on the kidneys. The problem is it may not be uh, easier on the kidneys because of the whole blood sugar connection. Too much protein right. doesn't damage the kidneys. If you have kidney disease, you may want to be a little bit more careful with your protein, but it's kind of a myth that too much protein will damage your kidneys. All right. That's a doctor myth. Okay. If you have kidney disease, you do want to be a little bit careful because one of the jobs of the kidneys is to eliminate nitrogen, and you're getting nitrogen in from your protein. That's what nit that's the main source of nitrogen is going to be protein, dietary protein. So you got to be a little bit careful if you have kidney disease. But your main focus needs to be on sugar. Blood sugar, elevated okay. blood sugar is the biggest problem with kidney disease and also with hypertension. So, uh, how old are you, my friend? I'm a Sixty-three. Okay, and uh, do you have diagnosed blood sugar problems? You don't need to be diagnosed, but have they diagnosed you that way? Uh, 
no. I mean, it's on. It's elevated, but it's not in the okay. diabetes. They, they range. call it pre diet. Uh, you know, the the distinction between diabetes and pre diabetes and no diabetes is very arbitrary. So we just call mm-hmm. it dysglycemia. So so yeah, right. you. It's probably if you have a kidney issue, that's what's going on, especially if you have hypertension too. So I'd be focusing on the blood sugar using Sweeties, using uh, uh, Ultimate Niacin, which is extremely important for helping the body stabilize sugar, getting on the Mighty 90 essential nutrients, especially the minerals like magnesium and zinc, very play a major role in how the body handles sugar, laying off the, sh- the foods that spike your blood sugar, that goes without saying as well. Uh, and then a ketogenic diet would be ideal for you. Now, as far as this vegan thing goes, um, you know, vegan, veganism is theoretically, I can see their point because the way we process meat today is just not good. And meat is not a quality food the way we eat it today. So I see their point. I'm sorry that they're depriving themselves of eggs and I'm sorry they're depriving yeah. themselves of uh, butter. But, you know, I can see their point when it comes to the meat. And seafood okay. is a little bit better. So I see their point. However, vitamin B12 is going to be much harder for you to get. Uh, protein is going to be much harder for you to get. Quality building protein. Carnitine is going to be impossible for you to get. Um, let's see what else is going to be. Iron, good iron, quality iron is going to be more difficult for you to get. You can do it, but you got to supplement strategically. you got to use things like algae. I mean, you got to be smart about it if you're going to go vegan. It's much, it, it's much more difficult to be healthy from a nutritional standpoint for a vegan. Not that it can't be done. You just got to do a lot more work. And you, you really want to be very careful of the soy and the beans and the processed carbohydrates that tend to make up a lot of the caloric intake of vegans. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I, the I vegetable thing, that. though, vegetables you want to go nuts with. And that means the best way to get a lot of vegetables is with a, with a Vitamix, do veggie juices. I'm not sure what this guy Clapper right. says. Maybe he wants to come on the air. Do you know him? No, I don't know. He's, oh. he's sounds like he's well-known. He, he used to be in a uh, one of those retreat spas in California that basically – uh, take people in for up to up to ninety days sometimes, and they're totally regenerated in their health yeah. and all. Yeah, if you're really sick and you go and you go vegan and you do it strategically and you do it intelligently, I can see how you would get some benefits. But uh, the problem with the whole vegan thing, or, or folks who promote vegan, is they compare veganism with the, a diet that features lots of meat and a diet that features lots of milk. And it features a lot of foods that aren't necessarily quality foods, and then they compare veganism to that. You follow what I'm saying? That's not a fair comparison. Yeah. Like this guy that, T. That Colin Campbell, he wrote a book called he's he pr- promoted veganism in a book uh, about the, called the China Study, and where he he went and compared people who were, Chinese people who were eating lots of milk and lots of lots of chicken and lots of uh, um, lots of processed meats and compared them to people who went vegan. And he said, oh, well, veganism is obviously way better than an animal diet, but it's not, that's not a fair comparison because milk is right. not a quality food. You follow me? You can't, that's, yes, a, that's a rude do. comparison. That's, a, that's a, the comparison of a demagogue, of somebody who's stacking mm-hmm. the deck and then coming up with results to prove their point. That's not fair. Gotcha. All, all yeah. right. All right, Bob. Thank Anything you else? so much. All right. Good no, day. That's Have it. A, Thank you. Thanks for calling, man. Good luck. All right. Let's go to Bob in... Colorado. Good morning, Bob. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Hey. I want to thank you for your uh, comments at the uh, convention. They were awesome. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Which which Bob is this? Who am I talking to here? Bob Doshman. How, I, 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 your voice sounds familiar. I, I don't remember what you look like, but I think well, I, you, I talked to you. You stood me up in the hall outside. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I Sorry apologize that. for that. You know, I get pulled in all these different directions, and I really apologize yeah, I for that. I know. It's tough so. being popular. And thanks for your patience. I really appreciate your patience. So what's going on? That's all right. I know where to, <clears throat> I know where to find you. Okay, uh, good. How many CBDs are in our products? You know, I don't know the answer to that, but Sanjeev is going to be on the air tomorrow, uh, next week, and we're going to talk about the, the longevity CBD products. And I just know a lot about CBD from pharmacy school and from studying CBDs, and I, I'm actually doing some CBD skincare products. I've been really studying, studying up on CBD for quite a few years now, hardcore for the last three or four years. So I know about CBD, but I don't know how Sanjeev formulated those products. But we're going to have him on next week to talk about it. So okay. I apologize uh, do you know what day? Uh, yeah, he's scheduled for next Wednesday, the 12th. Wednesday? Excellent. Yeah. I'll, have uh, you used any of them yet? 
Are they no, even available? Are they available? Yeah, they're not available. Mean? They're not available uh, yet. Yeah. They were sold out time I got to the hub. I think they made a bunch for the show, and then we did the talk, and then they sold. They sold out. Did you know about CBD before? Yes. How did? What was your background? How did you know about it? Uh, my daughter's into that. Ah, and she, she kept she, talking to me about them, and I was glad to see that we uh, jumped into that arena. Have you used any CBD products in the past? I have not. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, you know, listen up. It's You know if you've been listening to me for the last, I don't know, last couple of years, but especially the last week or two, I am a big believer in CBD, and I've heard some wonderful things about the Longevity CBD products, and I know Sanjeev, I've known him for many years, so I'm sure, and he's the guy who put it together, so I'm sure... It's going to be a pretty potent product. Yeah, they and, probably need to incorporate uh, the value thing with the CBDs because everybody I talk to wants to know how much. Uh huh. How much CBD is in there? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's you know those are good that, questions. That's a in very fact, common question for you know users of, of CBD. It's true. It's true. Um, I you know what I'm gonna I'll might even call Sanjeev today and and get some information for you for tomorrow. Uh, and then listen up next Wednesday because we'll be talking a lot about the Longevity CBD products. And, uh, Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else going on? Uh, what did you want to ask me in the hallway? Oh, do you know anything about MMS? MMS. If you tell me what it stands for, I might, but I don't know what I don't know. Miracle it it's... Mineral Solution. Oh, you know what? I've heard of it. I have had, I've gotten some questions about that in the past. Mir- uh, miracle Mineral Supplement, right? Right. Is that what right. you're talking about? Well, yeah, they, they, you, but, you know, yeah. I've I've heard of it, and I don't know a lot about it. Is that another network marketing product? No. You know, I don't know a lot about it, but uh, it, is that the chlorine dioxide? That's not the chlorine dioxide yes. one, is it? Yeah. yeah. Ah, chlorine dioxide. Yeah, I've been I've been interested in chlorine dioxide for a while as an antiseptic and also as a mouthwash. Um, it's a stable. It called stabilized chlorine dioxide, and I have I I do know a little bit about it. It's not it's not a health thing. But it can kill. It can kill. Th- it's not like it's a nutritional supplement, but it can be used to for things like it's been promoted for things like colds and acne and bacterial infections because of its antibacterial properties. But I was exploring it as a mouthwash because it kills mouth bacteria, uh, and it doesn't leave that kind of minty taste that Listerine leaves. But it still has good mouthwash um, uh, and mouth antiseptic properties. But that's pretty much the extent of what I know about MMS. Do you know anything about okay. it? I do, but not enough to be an expert on it. Okay. Uh, where do you get I it? I do a little research, and we'll, we'll talk down the road here a little bit. I will. Do you know where to get it? Uh, I'll text you some contact. Okay. All right, Bob. I got to go. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. Sorry I stood you, you up too, buddy. Talk to you. Okay. Okay. Take care. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. All our Truth products are made without preservatives, fillers, waxes, water, emulsifiers, surfactants, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 